رسول الله إذا درك هولا من كنت مولاه فهذا اليوم مولاه من الدين يوم الغدير علي حيدر كرار صار, صار أميري أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صلوات الله وسلامه عليه السلام عليك السيد مولاي يا أمير المؤمنين يا إمام المتقين ويا عصوب الدين علي بن أبي طالب Dear brothers and sisters, mu'mineen and mu'minat, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Congratulations to the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al-Asr was zaman. Congratulations to his Shia, to his followers all around the globe on this great day of Eid, a symbolic day for the mu'mineen, the day of Eid al-Ghadir, where our Imam, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, was crowned with the crown of wilaya when the Holy Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed his ammama and he placed it on the holy head of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, crowning him with this gift of wilaya. A day which will never be forgotten by the mu'mineen, a day which will always, always be remembered by the Sadat, by the Shia, by the lovers of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. To discuss this further, we are honored to be joined by our great guest, Sayyid Hujjatul Islam wal Muslimin, Mawlana Sayyid Ali Raza Rizvi, to our program. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna Al Jalil, Mawlana Al Aziz. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Without any further delay, we continue with our program when we remember this great day of Eid al Ghadir. Can you? with great detail outline what really took place what happened prior during and after this event and what was the reaction of the sahaba the mixed feelings that existed between the people between the muslims how did they come to surface wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah alladhi ja'alana min al-mutamassikin bi wilayati ali ibn talib alayhi salatu wa salam it is one of the greatest events in the islamic calendar it is the greatest eid that we have um, and I would like to quickly uh, historically mention how everything began. The Holy Prophet decided to go for Hajj with his family, his wives were with him and the entire family went with him, the Sahaba. Uh, the gathering is um, of 124,000 people in Hajj. Some people say less, some people say even more. Even so, more? Even more, 100, up to 140,000. Okay. So we have accounts of uh, people mentioning 90,000, 100 and something thousand, 124,000, 140. So we have traditions and that's why we say 124,000 people. So it was a big gathering? It was the largest gathering at the time. Okay. So Islam had spread all over the world. Um, uh, you know, even uh, all of the Arabian Peninsula had Muslims. So these were people from Yemen, from all over the Arabian? Yeah, from Iraq, from other parts. So all over the Arabian Peninsula, Hijaz, Hijaz. Yemen. Imam Ali al-Islam had gone uh, for tabliq to Yemen. The Holy Prophet had sent Khalid bin Walid uh, to Yemen for tabliq, and he came back after six months and said, I tried my best and no one converted. Okay. So then he sent Ali ibn Abi Talib uh, for, to Yemen for, for tabliq. And he said, Ya Ali, and the famous tradition that Ya Ali, if even one person is guided uh, on your hands, meaning through you, it is better than whatever the sun shines on. Mm -hmm. So if Allah guides one person through you, it is better than... Everything what? upon which the sun shines. So Imam al-Islam went and he gave a sermon. He had reached there just before Fajr and people in olden days used to sleep very early after Isha and used to get up very early in the morning. Yes. So Imam al-Islam gave a sermon. They say that in that one sermon, uh, more than half of the people of Yemen had converted, the people in Sana'a and uh, around that area. People in olden days would live close by, wherever the, uh, the, you know, the community was. Mm -hmm. So he converted majority of the people in one sermon. Wow. Then he told them there is uh, Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Subh, uh, there is uh, morning prayers. Everyone prayed and he gave a second sermon and re the rest of the people converted. So he converted everyone. He wrote to the Holy Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, I have converted all of Yemen. 
what are your orders? He said, bring all of them to Hajj. Okay, so he took them to Hajj. So this is just for Hajjat al-Wida, Imam al-Islam. So that's why the numbers were so large. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Prophet took all the people from around Medina. So there are five miqat for Hajj. Miqat meaning the people that are coming from different destinations, they have to wear ihram. People coming from Medina, usually this is their miqat is Masjid al-Shajara. Okay. Dhul Hulayfa. And the people coming from Yemen is basically uh, Masjid Tanaim or, you know, uh, just outside, you know, Jeddah. Right. There is a place that's where they, where they wear their ihram. So that's where Imam al-Islam came. Okay. So all the different five positions, they all came. And the Holy Prophet arrived in, uh, in Hajj and he led the Hajj himself. And it was the greatest uh, event because... Uh, it was also, uh, you know, Fateh Makkah, you know, the Makkah was conquered. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu had entered uh, with uh, dignity and respect. He had left when they were going to kill him. Mm -hmm. They had decided to kill him the night and he left and he had no one. And now he came back with so much power that Abu Sufyan um, had to surrender and had to uh, uh, confess uh, that he was weaker and he, he had to say that he was wrong and... Uh, he was helpless. He, he was helpless. Yes. So he ha they, uh, they all converted. And they, no blood was shed that day. No blood was shed and everyone converted. The Holy Prophet wearing a haram. Even in a haram you cannot wear weapons. So had, they had no swords, no... So they entered errors. without weapons. Without weapons they entered Mecca and Allah. they converted the whole of the town. So it is not with the sword that they converted everyone. Of course. Yeah. Everyone converted and the Holy Prophet وسلم, you know, very beautifully uh, said the things that, you know, when Hazrat Sa'ad ibn Ubadah announced, al yom yom al malhama He was holding the banner and he was leading and he said, today is a day of malhama. Malhama is revenge. And the Holy Prophet said, no, take the banner from him, O Ali. And O Ali came forward and took the banner from him and said, al yom yom al marhama He only changed one letter. Ra, in there. ra rather than the lam. And he said, Al -yom -yom, why is it the day of mercy? Because Rahmatan lil alameen is coming. Subhanallah. So it was a day of mercy and the day of forgiveness for everyone. And he can so when everyone converted the Holy Prophet led the Hajj. And throughout the Hajj he was concerned that this is his final Hajj, Hajjat Luda, the only Hajj. Um, and he was going to be leaving this world and he had to make sure that the people were not led left behind without any guide, without any leader. There was revelation upon him from Allah. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that soon you will be leaving this world. And it is mentioned in Sahih Muslim. I'm not sure if it is also in Sahih Bukhari, but I've read in Sahih Muslim myself. Okay. Uh, um, uh, you know, the uh, you know, the, the messenger of my Lord will be coming to me, meaning an angel will come. Right, okay. Uh, and you should, you know, and, uh, will invite me back to Allah, meaning take my soul back. And I will say, Labbaik, I will say, yes. I will answer the call of my Lord. Yes, I'm going to answer the call of my Lord, and meaning I'll, I'll die very soon. He's yes. telling the people that I'm going to be killed. I'm going. Now, all of this is happening, and people are now concerned what is going to happen, if he's, when, and people are all listening. And he asks a number of questions. He gives the longest sermon of his life. Khutbatul Ghadir. Obviously, uh, the Hajj has now completed. People are not in Ihram, but they have shaved their heads, men. Women are wearing their own hijab. Everyone is covered and everyone leaves. As soon as they start leaving Makkah. Makkah was a valley. Still is a valley. All around are mountains. And basically, it was deeper. So whenever the, it was raining, the water used to gather and it used to flood become there. flood there. So it was a valley. And you can see there are mountains in Mina and Arafat, so Mecca, and then right next to it is Mina, and then Mash'ar, and then Arafat. And then anyway, so the Holy Prophet completed the Hajj, and they, everyone left. So basically Hajj was completed on the uh, 12th, 13th, or the 14th, uh, they were still there, 13th, and then they left for Medina. Everyone started leaving. As a caravan. As a caravan, different people started leaving on the 15th, and uh, you can now go back, your Hajj is complete. On the 13th, 12th or 13th, you can complete on the 12th, but if you still remain in 
um, at the time of Maghrib in Mina, then you have to sleep that night in Mina as well, and then again stone the three shaitans, yes. and then the Hajj is completed on 13th. So now, let's say even if they're completed on 13th and not 12th, um, they all started leaving on the 14th, and probably after completing Mina, because they stayed the night, stay, they came to Makkah, yes. performed the uh, Hajj Ziyarat or you know the Tawaf Ziyarat or you know the Tawaf of uh, Hajj. Yes. Uh, the the two rakats, the Sa'i, and then Tawaf al-Nisa, right. and the two rakats. Because the Holy Prophet used to do Tawaf al-Nisa, it was banned in the second Khilafat. Of course. Uh, you know, so, so they performed all of that, let's say on the 14th, 15th, and 16th, everyone started leaving. Okay. So the Holy Prophet وسلم, when he left Makkah, he reached Ghadir, which is uh, outside Makkah. How far is it? About 42 kilometers. Kilometers. <clears throat> So let's say it's about 40 something miles or kilometers. Yeah, 30 outside, something miles, yes. It's outside uh, Makkah. Right. Now, because people used to come down outside Makkah and then they would take different caravans and it was a junction. So everyone is now departing Makkah. People going to Medina, Iraq, you know, Syria, Yemen, everyone. So this verse from Surah Ma'idah, Surah number 5, verse number 67 comes Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhar rasul بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّغْتَ رِسَالَتَهُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْسِمَكَ مِنَ النَّاسِ O my messenger, deliver what has been revealed unto you. بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّغْتَ رِسَالَتَهُ If you don't deliver this message, then you have not done anything. In the previous session, we discussed this verse. Yes. I'll not go into more details. So the people started gathering. And when everyone uh, gathered, so... So this was in Ghadir Khum? In, in the... Junction. Ghadir is basically a place where there is water. Okay. So there was there, there is water, meaning there is a reservoir right. of water. And Khum is basically the place. Okay. So a pool in Khum. Ghadir mm Khum. -hmm. At this point, everyone is still together. Everyone had now parted. People had started leaving. Uh -huh, they're leaving in different directions. Mm, yes. So everyone, when they started leaving, the Holy Prophet said, call everyone back. Anyone who's gone ahead, call them back. Mm -hmm. So people had gone ahead of the Holy Prophet and... So Hazrat Abu Dhar gave adhan. Right. So someone gave adhan. He said, Allahu Akbar. And then they realized this is not the time for Dhuhr. This is early morning. We've already prayed Fajr. What is this adhan? So this is a call back. Everyone come back. The Holy Prophet is calling you through adhan. Mm -hmm. So he called everyone back. And uh, there was a companion of the Holy Prophet. Uh, he had so he had a very loud voice. In olden days, they did not have loudspeakers and microphones. Yes. So what they would do is they, they were you you even see that in sometimes some some films as well that they try and portray that people who had loud voices in the historical films they would speak very loudly and they had some people had very loud voices. Naturally, so they, would they scream. were loud. Yes. Naturally, they were very loud. So he screamed. Can't remember the name of the companion, and the Holy Prophet said, "Call everyone." So he went to a hill. And he started screaming loudly that the Holy Prophet is calling you back. Right. Okay. Everyone came and he said, make a member for me. I want a pulpit, a big pulpit. The pulpits are usually made based on the crowd that you have. Okay. So the number of people. If there are 100 people in front of me, then even a chair will be fine. But if there are uh, a, thousand, a people. thousand people, then I would need a higher. few steps. Something which is higher so the people could see me. Yes. And if there were 10,000 people, then would be something much higher I would need. And if there were 100,000 people, then you can imagine that the, the pulpit people, had yeah. to be very high. So the Holy Prophet is visible to everyone. He's visible. And so he got the people to make a pulpit and they took off the sedans from the back of their horse. Saddle is on the back of a, ca uh, of a horse and sedan is on the back of the camel. So it was a wooden right, okay. um, so carrier. They, for, for the, they took off the seat from the camel. Yeah, so it was a wooden wooden carrier on the back of the uh, camel they would sit on. And then they would oh, some wow. place some cloth or some right. form so they could sit easily. So they took those off and they started placing them on the ground. There was a huge, big uh, platform they built. And the Holy Prophet said, no, make it higher and higher. So I could, s you know, all the people. Today, you know, the Holy Prophet never made an attempt to be seen. But he said, no, today I need to be seen. So the people said, well, there's something very important. You know, all of it shows how important Ghadir is and how important the announcement is. So he made the very high platform, uh, you know, the pulpit, and it was very high. And the scholars say that in front of the Holy Prophet, on, on the right and on the left, were men. And the women were sitting behind the Holy Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right, men were in front, 
the women on, were behind. Yes, yeah, so the men were on, on in front, on the right, and on the left. And the women were behind the Holy Prophet. Right. Okay. So they made a very high platform. And when everyone sat down on that platform, yeah, well, and in front of the platform and around it, so he said everyone should gather. Everyone sat down and then he looked at the companion. He said, keep repeating my words. So he, the Holy Prophet used to speak very slow. You could count the words. And, but he wanted the words announced by the companion so the people who are far away can hear the Holy Prophet So he went to a hill and the Holy Prophet said, can you hear me? He said, yes. So the Holy Prophet spoke and he gave the longest sermon of his life. Yes. So it's a, it's a small booklet. Uh, I have a small booklet that has about 300 lines uh, of, khutbah? of the khutbah. It's so 300 the, lines. Yes, 300 lines. So the Holy Prophet started the sermon and he said, uh, I have, or, you know, O oh Allah be my witness that I have delivered your message to the perfect and these people will give witness that I have delivered it. Mm. And the people said, yes, we. so he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, he said the, the mission that he had come with and the delivery and the problems that happened. Yes, yes. And then he said, my successors and the times after me. So he spoke at length, in depth. Right. And the people started feeling the heat and so they were covering their heads and they were sitting down. Of course, it was a hot day. It was a hot day. It was sun the, shining. Sun shining. So it was, uh, but there was a, something very special, one of the writers on Ghadir says. He says that, he's one of the historians, he says, Ali Naqi, uh, Naqi, he says that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu on this day, uh, had asked Imam al-Islam to sit next to him on the pulpit. Right. And so he said that, you know, this time people had always seen the Holy Prophet alone on the pulpit. And this time and they could not pay attention to the sermon because they kept looking what is special, what is going to happen, why has the Holy Prophet told Ali ibn Abi Talib to sit next to him. Mm -hmm. So there are two people sitting on the pulpit rather than one. Right. And that was something new to the people. Strange to the people. Strange to the people. And uh, so they were listening to the Holy Prophet. They continuously looked at Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib al -Salam, continuously. What anticipating is going on? something. <laughs> yes, anticipating <laughs> that something is about to happen. Now that the Holy Prophet asked them, Man kun, you know, Alastu awla bikum in anfasikum? Maula is awla bi tasarruf, meaning uh, I have more priority over you than you yourselves. Right. So it is not maula in the meaning of friend or freed slave, but it is maula in the meaning of master. Okay. So he told them the meaning and then he, some say he held his, the hand of Imam al-Islam with his left hand, his right hand, and he picked him up and he said, Man kunta maula fahad ali maula. He showed on the right hand side, fahad ali maula. The others say that he picked him up from his arms. Now, can you imagine the Holy Prophet وسلم, holding Ali ibn Abi Talib up with his two hands and bringing in front of him? You see, two aspects have to be very... Why did he pick him up and show him to everyone? Well, I always say that in the plains of Uhud, when the Sahaba were running away from the Holy Prophet, yes. it was Ali ibn Abi Talib who picked up the Holy Prophet and said, Ayyuhan um, Nas, Hada Muhammad Rasulullah. He announced three times, this is Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Rasulullah, that he is alive, he is not dead. When someone said when that someone said, Muhammad, dead, Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is dead. So people started running away. So Imam Ali Islam picked him up on the mountain of Uhud and said, no, he's alive. He's alive. And he, so I always say that the Holy Prophet was paying him back and said, well, you announced that I am Rasulullah. And today I will say Aliun Waliullah or Aliun Mawla. Ali is Mawla. Ali is the Wali of Allah. The second thing is, one of the scholars, he says in his book, he says that the Holy Prophet picked him up. You see, if I pick up a book in front of me, it will cover a part of me. Yes. But only a small part of me will be mm -hmm. covered. The rest of me will be visible. visible. My face and the rest of my body will be visible. If I picked up a child in front of me, the child will also cover me. Mm -hmm. But the rest of me will be visible. My right. face and the rest of my body will be visible. But if a person my height and my size comes and stands in front of me, I will be covered, covered and I'll be invisible. I will not be seen by the people. So the Holy Prophet ﷺ has a message here. So he picks up, he holds him Islam with his two hands and he stands up and he says, Man kuntum ala fahada ali ala. Now the Holy Prophet is covered. SubhanAllah. He argues there's a message here he's giving. 
that look, I will soon be gone into a shadow. I'll soon be invisible to your eyes. Right, okay. okay. I will, I am, whenever you say La ilaha illallah, you will say Muhammad Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. But you will not have access to me. I will not be, uh, I'll not be uh, any longer amongst you. You will not be able to see me. Mm -hmm. So I am going into covering. covering. But there is someone who is replacing this nur. And the nur that is replacing me is this nur that so I'm I, showing you. Man kunta maula, fahada aliyan maula, fahada aliyan maula. Now the whole crowd gets up and gets excited and everyone starts saying, Bakhin bakhin laka yabna abi talib. Congratulations to you, oh, yabna abi talib. Son of Abu Talib, congratulations. You have become, asbahta maulaya wa maula kulli mu'min wa mu'mina. You've become the maula of every believing man and woman. And when everyone is congratulating him, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, uh, you know, when the people say, Ya Rasulullah, are we allowed to leave? He says, no. No one can leave until every single man and woman pays allegiance to my brother Ali ibn Abi Talib. Men and women together. Every man and woman has to pay allegiance. A person stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, uh, what about water? He said, you have ghadir and if you need more water, dig a well here. People uh, made excuses to get out of there. <laughs> to, to leave because it was hot. He said, no, place your tents here and you remain here until everyone. So, it, so the historians say it took three days for the entire crowd of 124,000 people to pay allegiance to Imam Ali. So three days they camped out there. So they camped out there for three days to pay allegiance to him. So this is a sign that it is paying allegiance. Bayat, Mubaya, that he is Mawla, Awla bit tasarruf and not Mawla in the Mawla meaning of friend. It's not a friend that you pay allegiance to, it is a master that you pay allegiance, allegiance to. to. Absolutely. So number one, he said, no, you have to, to pay allegiance to him. Number two, when the people started saying that there is no water, he said, there is ghadid, there is a pond here. He said, that's not enough water for 124,000 people. He said, dig a well here. So they dug a well, you know, it took them hours. And they said the water is not uh, sweet, so he's, he put his saliva inside it, placed and it became so he said what about the food you know the, at the same time so people started saying what about the food he said uh, you can uh, do nahar you know you can slaughter my camel mm -hmm. she camel they said well it won't be enough for this crowd he said uh, it will be enough because it is my she camels i'm the person who whose uncle abu talib fed the whole of the clan with a small uh, lamb and when the people came, my, uh, you know, the relatives came, they said, Abu, Abu Talib, you've disgraced us. A small lamb with, uh, for such a big crowd, we, each one of us eats a lamb. So, uh, Hazrat Abu Talib uh, Fed said, the whole community. Uh, he said that my nephew Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has touched it. So, there'll be barakat. Subhanallah. So, the Holy Prophet said, no, this will be enough. And then he said, okay, ladies first. The ba'ath will begin from my household. So the ladies will pay ba'ath first. Right, okay. So he placed a tent and he said all the ladies come into the tent mm -hmm. and one by one come and pay allegiance. Now there is a difference of opinion how Imam Ali uh, took allegiance from, from, the, from the ladies. They say that the Holy Prophet ﷺ would usually place his, uh, his abba on his hand and that's how he would take allegiance from the women. So he would touch them through a cloth. Right. And others argue that the, the Imam al-Islam, well, you know, this is what Imam Ali al-Islam did. He sat down with his Abba and the women came and touched his hand and paid allegiance to him. The others argue... So this is one opinion of some ulama. Some of the ulama historians have mentioned this. They accept this. Yes. And in the uh, book of uh, Allama Sayyid Muhammad Hussain Taharani, he has a detailed book of Imam Shanasi. In that he mentions that uh, there was a utensil placed in front of Imam Ali al-Islam with water. And he sat down with his fingers inside the utensil like this. And the women would come from the other side and they would sit down in front of the utensil, the pot. There was water and they would place their fingers inside mm -hmm. uh, into the water. And they would say that we promise you that we will not break our allegiance. And we'll be, you know, so they all had to say that we, ba'at mubaya'a, it is a two-way thing. Mm -hmm. A group of people pay allegiance and the other uh, says that, okay, if you remain loyal to me, you don't go uh, to battle against me. You don't um, uh, conspire against me. Um, then I promise uh, that I will guide you and I will uh, do shafa'at for you. I will intercede for you. Intercede for you. So the women uh, finished paying allegiance and then Imam Alisan came out 
Salman and Abu Dhar uh, placed a small tent for Muhammad al-Islam to stand in the shadow and the people lined up and they started paying allegiance and as the people paid allegiance they started leaving. Mm -hmm. um, and on the third day it was Salman, Abu Dhar, Miqdad, Ammar, they paid allegiance and then everyone. So it was a lengthy process. It was a lengthy process. And it took a lot of time and hence the importance of this uh, event that took place. Yeah. The other thing I want to ask that when the Messenger of Allah here is announcing wilaya of Imam Amir al muminin and that when you give bay'ah, you submit to the wali, you submit to the wilaya of the Imam. Is he announcing the wilaya of Imam Amir al muminin like his own wilaya or is there a, a daraja lower for the wilaya of Imam Amir al muminin to Rasulullah? What is wilaya? That is the main question I have uh, in regards to the wilaya of the Imam. And the second question, and you can further elaborate in the same, under the same question is, what does it mean when we say that we as the Shia, we believe that our Imams, 12 of Imams, 14 infallib infallibles, they have wilayat al taqwini and wilayat al tashri'i Please can you explain on this because there's a lot of misconceptions about this. Some people perhaps do not understand it uh, as well as others. And some people just say, well, it is just muhabba, just love. So if you could shed some light on this, please. Okay. Uh, first of all, the vilayat of the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali al-Islam uh, is, uh, is, uh, is equal or the same. Um, even though Imam Ali al-Islam is obedient to the Holy Prophet uh, all of his life, but it is um, equal. In the Holy Quran it says, Ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasulah wa ulil amri minkum. Be obedient to Allah and be obedient to His Messenger and uh, the authority amongst you. Authorities are basically the 12 Imams. I don't want to go into that now because that's another topic. Now, uh, the rule in Arabic is you either say, Ati'u, you know, the, the, the order, the command comes once and all the people to be obeyed should come next. Ati'u Allah wa Rasulahu wa ulil amri minkum. That's how Allah should have said it. Right. Or if they are going to repeat the, the command, then it should be repeated for the number of times that the, uh, the, the ones that are to be obeyed. You Each know, the time amount there again. should be the word of ita'ah for them. Yes. Atiyu Allah wa atiyu Rasulullah wa atiyu ulil amri minkum. Yes. So it should have been either once or three times. But it's only twice. But it's only twice. Right. And the reason? Okay. Now, so if it was for emphasis, then it should have been three times. Exactly. But if it was just a command which is equal for all three, then it should have been once. Only once, yes. But Allah says it twice. Atiyu Allah wa atiyu Rasul wa ulil amri minkum. He's showing, no, there are two obediences. Mm -hmm. The obedience to Allah and the obedience to the Holy Prophet. But the obedience to the Holy Prophet is same as ulil amr. Okay, so they're on the same level of obedience. So their obedience is same because they are infallible, because they are both creation. But the obedience to atiyu Allah, even they are included in it. So even they have to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Holy Prophet and the Ulil Amr. Okay. So even they are muti of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta they have to take the orders. Yes. But the, so, so there are two categories of itaat. One is of khaliq and one is of makhluq. So makhluq, the infallibles are in one category, in, non-infallibles are in the other. For example, for the parents, Allah says, obey your parents, but fala to But if they ever tell you to disobey Allah, then don't obey them. So they, in uh, fallibles, obedience to you know people who are, can be sinful their obedience is not same as the infallible mm -hmm. but the infallible's obedience is not same as Allah so the infallible's obedience comes in the same so category. there's the obedience of God and then I am Ahlul Bayt so the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt or the Prophet. infallibles yes the 14 infallibles right and what is Wilayat Taqwini oh. and Tashri'i now the word Wilayat there is a book by Shaykh Murtaw Mutahari called Wilaya um, in Farsi. And there is a translation in English as well. So he says, what is the difference between the Shia and the Sunni opinion on the word Vilaya? He argues that our Sunni brothers say the word Vilaya means uh, love. That's the common understanding. So, the, so the, if you, Allah is demanding for you to uh, love them. Um, so the love is Vilaya. We say Vilaya is authority. So he argues and he gives many, many proofs. Now the time is not enough that we go into the details that it is authority. So we believe Vilaya or Valaya. Vilaya is basically authority. 
it is not love. Love is hubba muhabba. But yes, the word wilaya is also used for love. Mm -hmm. But for the Holy Prophet and the Almighty, the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt al-Islam, it is used. The demand for love is separate. قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلَكُمْ إِلَّهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَ Oh, my messengers say to them that the compensation for my uh, message that I have delivered to you um, is nothing is, but the love of my is, family. Yeah, it's nothing but the love of my family. Now, so it is not love that he's demanding. It is, vilaya is authority. Vilaya is authority. هُنَا لِكَ الْوَلَا يَتَلِ اللَّهِ الْحَقِّ the authority is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. And he gave it to the Holy Prophet and the Imams alayhi wa Right. In the Holy Quran. In Indeed, your masters, your wali, here, master. Allah is not your friend. No, no. Allah is your mawla, meaning mawla, wali or master. In nama waliyukumullahu. Yeah. And in the next verse it says, whenever you have a dispute, then you return it to Allah and the Master. So, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Indeed, your Master is Allah and His Messenger. وَالَّذِينَ And the ones, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ The ones who believe. آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ السَّلَاةَ And set fast in prayers. وَيُوتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ Whom here is for hal. It is state. And they give zakat, so they, uh, be, they believe, they fast in prayers and they give zakat while in ruku some argue in that state of ruku so while in ruku in the state of ruku when they give zakat some argue well this verse is for Ali ibn Abi Talib both Shias and Sunnis have mentioned hmm. that this verse was revealed for Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. some of the Shia scholars argue that for Imam Ali alayhi salam, the words have come into plural why? because Allah has left a position for uh, the other Imams so right. there is, we are now announcing Ali, but we have left it open so that the other Imams will be included. Right, okay. Um, however, Jarullah Sheikh Jarullah is Zamakhshari. Sheikh Zamakhshari is one of the greatest uh, Mufassirin. He has a tafsir called Al Kashaf. Of Ahl Sunnah. Of Ahl Sunnah. Al Kashaf is a very beautiful uh, tafsir of Quran. In his tafsir of this verse, he says, this verse he says, revealed only for Ali ibn Abi Talib. But why has Allah then used the words in plural? So he says that Allah used the words in plural um, in Jam. He says to keep the ayat open that if there is anyone who thinks they can become like Ali ibn Abi Talib, then till the day of judgment the verse is open. Show, show, show me that if you can. can. Show that you can. So it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Open challenge. That no one can ever become. After Ali ibn Abi Talib, no one can take his position. So when Rasulullah is announcing wilayat of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen in Ghadir, is it correct to say that he is also announcing the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt? The wilaya of Ahlul Bayt, it is open because he announces, he says that uh, I will have 12 successors. It's an ashara. Uh, in Sahih Bukhari also, in Sahih Bukhari, it says in um, Sahih Bukhari that uh, Jabir ibn Samura, the Ravi is Jabir ibn Samura, both are companions, father and son. Jabir and his father Samura are companions of the Holy Prophet sallallahu and they say that the Holy Prophet said, La yazalu amra. The, this, this, this ummah, the, the, affair, this, the rule of this ummah will never finish until uh, isna ashara rajulan. Until 12 men rajulan. Men. Isna ashara rajulan. 12 men rule. So 12 has been used in Sahih Bukhari. The successor of the Holy Prophet will be 12 men. Mm -hmm. This uh, isna ashara rajulan, if you want to understand rajulan, then in Sahih Bukhari it also says, the Holy Prophet said in uh, Khaybar, <coughs> Tomorrow I will give the banner, the alam to a brave man. A brave man. Rajulan Kararan, Ghaira Farrarin, who will never run away from the battlefield. Subhanallah. Uh, he loves Allah and His Messenger, and Allah and His Messenger love him. him. Now, so he is Rajul. Ali ibn Talib is a Rajul. Isn't so 12 men like Ali. In Sahih Muslim, there are seven riwayat, seven traditions from the Holy Prophet. One says, Isna Ashara Rajul. One says, Isna Ashara Amir. 12 men, 12 Amir. Right. And five say, Isna Ashara Khalifatan. Right, so okay. 12 Khalifas will come after me. The number is the same. Number is the same. Tirmizi also says 12. Ahmad bin Hamal, Musnad Ahmad bin Hanbal. 
So they've all mentioned 12. Shias and Sunnis have all said. The Holy Quran also says 12. Surah number 5, verse number 12. Surah 5, verse number 12. 12. And we raised 12 chieftains amongst Bani Israel. And for every messenger in the Holy Quran, Allah says there will be 12. And the Holy Prophet was asked, Ya Rasulullah, Kamil or Siyah, how many wasiv successors will you have? He said, same as Nuqabai Bani Israel. There were 12, I will have so 12. Chiefs of Bani Israel were 12, I will also have 12. So now the Holy Prophet is announcing the 12. So he says, Awwalahum Ali wa akhirahum Mahdi. In Ghadir of Khutbah of Ghadir, he says in the Sermon of Ghadir, I will have 12 successors. The first one of them is Ali and the last one is Mahdi. Okay, yeah. So he announces all 12. So he's announcing their authority, Vilaya of the 12 Imams. And Vilaya at Takwini and Vilaya Tashri. Tashri is in Sharia. Could you expand on that. Okay, Takwini is Alam Ikon. The Alam Ikon is basically this whole universe. Right. Do the Imams, the Holy Prophet and the Imams have an authority? Of course, uh, authority is Allah. Walillah al amru min qabla wa min ba'd. The amr is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The command is His. Right. Huna alika al walayat al al haq. The walayat is His. Now, it is not tafweed we believe in. Tafweed is to relinquish Allah of His authority. That Allah hands over. Tafweed is batil. We don't believe in that. The okay. Shias do not believe that Allah hands over His power and His mu'attal, ta'atil. So what do they believe? So we don't believe that he has given his power to someone else and he doesn't do anything. No. That's tough, tough weed. That's tough weed. Tough weed is batil. batil. We believe that Allah is the one in control and is the authority, the ultimate authority. Ultimate authority. But it does not mean that he does not give the power to others. Like in the angel of death, he's given uh, the authority to take souls. Right, yes. Allah yudawafikum. It is Allah who kills you, but He has also given Malakul Maut the power to, to take the souls. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the vilayat to the Ahlul Bayt, so Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi wasalam. So they have authority, they have power, but it is not that they are mustaqil, they are independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are dependent on Allah. They are connected with God. Yeah, with they, are, they are dependent on Allah. Dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are never ever. Uh, you know, independent, right? Mustaqil. There is no istiqlal uh, for anyone but Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So this is how, for example, Nabi Isa would raise the dead. Yeah. Because he had that power given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah. Or even if you see in Surah Naml, uh, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, you know, Nabi Suleiman uh, says that who will bring the throne of the queen to me? Qala Ifrit min al jinn and the Ifrit from amongst the jinn, he said, I can bring you before you leave your place. Waqala man indahu ilmu min al kitab, the one who had partial knowledge of the book, said, Ana atikabi qabla an yatadata fa ainuk, before the blink of an eye, I can bring you the throne. Um, Asif ibn Barqiyah. Asif ibn Barqiyah, the successor of Nabi Suleiman. But in Surah Ra'd, was he a prophet? He was a successor of Hazrat Suleiman. Uh, the wasi of the wasi. prophet, wasi of uh, Suleiman. prophet, yeah. yeah. But in Surah Ra'd, ayat number 43, last verse of Surah Ra'd, the thunder in Surah number 13, verse 43. مرسلا قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ And the ones who disbelieve say to you that you are not an apostle, you have not been sent by God, meaning... Lassa Mursala, you've not been sent by God. Qul, mm -hmm. say to them, Kafa billahi shaheedan bayni wa baynakum wa man in the holy kitab. Between me and you, or disbelievers, between me and you, there are two witnesses that are sufficient. Two witnesses for his messengership, that he's a prophet, he's a rasul. One is Allah. Qul, kafa billahi shaheedan bayni wa baynakum wa man in the holy kitab. And the one who has the knowledge of the entire book, that is Ali Nabi Talib alayhi salam. Over there, there was ilmun min al kitab. Well, il, ilmul kitab. And here is ilmul kitab. Ilm, ilm of the entire book. Complete. The complete, the knowledge of the entire book. So if Asif and Barkhia can do that, then. With partial knowledge. With partial knowledge, then Imam Amir Mu'mineen. And we have in Usul al Kafir riwayat and traditions, and also Haqqul Yaqeen and other books. What, uh, how much knowledge did Asif and Barkhia had? They said he had one ismi adam. Just one ismi adam. One ismi adam. Um, and there are 73 Asma'ul Adam altogether, the Hadith says. And Suleiman himself had two, the Prophet. Subhanallah. 
so all the prophets I mentioned how many they had. Some had two, some had four, some had more, eight. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said out of the 73, he has given 72 asma'i a'adham to Ahlul Bayt Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi wa So Imam alayhi wa had 72. He said, so Allah has all 73, but he gave Ahlul Bayt 72. And he did not give them one to keep a difference that he is the khaliq and they are makhluq. He is the creator and they are the created. Subhanallah. That is that fine line between them. Yes. So, that, so, so they do have the complete vilayat. That is taqweeni. And tashri. Tashri is basically haram and halal and do they have, uh, you know, the vilayat uh, to explain and to, to, to uh, legislate. Right, okay. So that's vilayat. Okay. And in this, uh, this event that unfolded, um, did, is it from here that after the open announcement of wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen, is it from here that the Shia, uh, because many people they complain that you know the Shia they have changed this, they have changed that in the Azan, there is Ashhadu anna aliyan waliyullah. Is there any rawayat that point to the fact that here it began the open Ashhadu anna aliyan waliyullah in the Azan before Salah? I, I, I think there may be some traditions. Could you shed some light on that as well? Uh, in Ma'alimu uh, Zulfa, in Amarhum Ayatollah Sayyid Abdul Nabi Shirazi from Qum, he has mentioned in his book Ma'alimu Zulfa that it was the first time uh, in Ghadir when the announcement happened, the time for Dhuhr came, and Abu Dhar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Sahabi of the Holy Prophet, Abu Dhar Ghafari, um, you know, uh, his name is uh, Jundab ibn Junada, and yes. famously known as Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Allah. He gave the adhan and he said, Ashhadu anna Ali wa liullah in the adhan after Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So the Sahaba complained to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Ya Rasulullah, he has changed. Uh, he has added. Uh, so the Holy Prophet said, I heard. So we believe the definition of sunnah is. Uh, the words, actions, and tacit approvals of uh, the infallible is sunnah. Sunnah and hujjah. So the Holy Prophet did not stop Abu Dhar and say, this is bidah, why did you start this? So therefore we believe that it is allowed. But it did not establish the Holy Prophet after him, after Ghadi did not, uh, because the Sahaba still had problems with it. Mm -hmm. So it did not establish and it finished. They say that whenever Abu Dhar... Oh, it finished Salman, after that time. Well, whenever Abu Dhar and Salman gave Adhan... They would always... They would say it after, the, you know, after Ghadir. Right. But the others did not. Uh -huh. And uh, so after the Holy Prophet وسلم, it completely uh, finished. And Imam Ali al-Islam did not impose it on the people because it was him, for himself and of they would course, have said yes. that you know, he's only asking for himself. Right. Um, and the Aima were living through Taqayya because Banu Umayyah then came into power mm. and they were anti Ali ibn Abi Talib and then came Bani Abbas. So it was around the 11th uh, Imam Alayhi time, Imam Hassan Asghar Salam's time, that it actually became established. Uh, established. It wasn't during the time of the early Aima Alayhi Salam. It was only the last two Imams during their time. Mm -hmm. It started uh, establishing. Right. But before that, it wasn't, uh, the Imams did not. Uh, enforce it. Okay. Ahsantum. And finally, because we are reaching towards the end of our program, the final question is, could you possibly for our <coughs> viewers, for the mu'mineen and also for the muslimin at large, introduce maybe one or two books that deal extensively with this research of Al-Ghadir and where they have challenged and answered challenges that uh, people have posed questions in regards to this event. Is there anything that we can refer to and any good works and projects that are out there? There are many, many books from early uh, times, like uh, uh, the books of Sheikh Saduq have now, uh, we only have 32 books left of him, of 190 something books. Most of his books were destroyed. But Sheikh Mufid has some books. Um, Sheikh Tusi has. Uh, some books on Sayyid Murtada as well, but uh, Ashafi by Sayyid Murtada, but also Asha, um, Ashafi Fil Imam, you know, by Sheikh Tusi. But the greater books, the extensive books, are basically by Allah Mahilli, 
Al Alfain, his book Al Alfain, two thousand, one thousand uh, proofs that Imam Ali al-Islam is Khalifa bila fasl. Right. Without a gap, he is the successor of the Holy Prophet, and one thousand proofs that he is the greatest after okay. the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, uh, and, and he's written many of the books as well. You know, answers to many of the objections. Objections he's answered. So he's not just got one book, but he's got many. Um, he has. Uh, Kashful uh, Yaqeen. Yeah, Kashful Yaqeen. But then uh, the greater books were, by, were the first one by Shaheed al Thalith. Marhum Atul Qadi. Said Nurullah Shushtari. He's in Agra in India. He's buried there, Iranian. But he had migrated in Nurullah Shushtari in the times of the Mughals. He migrated to India. He has a book called Ihqaq al Haq. Right. al Batil. You know, so he has a very detailed book. Ihqaq al Haq is the revelation of the truth. It is on the Vilayat of Imam Ali or the Imamat. Okay. It is a commentary on Kashful uh, Yaqeen of Allah Mahilli, but it is an answer to many of the enemies at the time. So that is very extensive. Okay. So that's about 29 volumes. So he wrote about 19 volumes, 18, 19 volumes, and then Amarhum uh, Atullah Marashi Najafi completed it and wrote the rest of the volumes. Uh, also by Mir Hamid Hussain Musavi from India, from Lucknow. He has done, he is probably the largest book on on Vilayat. It's called Abaqatul Anwar. Mm -hmm. Abaqatul Anwar is uh, is in Farsi, but it is one of the longest books on Vilayat of Muhammad al Islam. Um, the summary. How many volumes is it? Well, he wrote and then his son continued. Continued so, it, right? Okay. So we don't know, we don't have the full printed yet. So forty five volumes. Wow. Uh, but his uh, uh, his son Mir uh, uh, Sayyid the uh, Nasser Hussain Musafi continued. But in Arabic, Sayyid Ali Milani um, summarized it in Arabic and wrote Nafakhatul Azhar um, in about uh, 20 volumes. So the summary is in about 20 volumes. And the, the book which is the most famous on Ghadir is Al Ghadir. Kitab Al Ghadir. Uh, Kitab Al Ghadir. Al Ghadir Fil Kitab Wa Sunnat Wa Al Adab. Mm -hmm. So Ghadir in three parts in Fil Kitab in Kitabullah. That's a very famous book. By Allama Amini, Allama Sheikh Abdul Hussain Amini. So this is a, a recent book about 50 years ago. He compiled, he spent a lifetime, I think 35 years he spent wow. writing the book. And he died in 1970, 1969, 1970 he died. Allama Amini, he was originally Sheikh Abdul Hussain Amini, Tabrizi from Tabrizi, Iran, but he was based in Najaf. Right. Uh, so he wrote about 20 volumes on Ghadir, what 11 are published. What does he focus on in these? So Al-Ghadir, so basically what he does is he, uh, Kitab, so seven verses he brings from the Holy Quran, right. Ghadir in Kitab, and then Ghadir in Sunnah of the Holy Prophet. Okay. So the tradition of Ghadir and other traditions pertaining it, and and then Fil Adab, Shu'ara. Right. So so many Shu'ara have written on Ghadir. So usually Shair, Shair is Khayal, is ima on imagination. But he says, how many people can imagine Ghadir? So something must have happened in Ghadir that so many poets have written. Right. So 11 volumes are published and 9 volumes are still not published. 9 volumes are on Rajal. Okay. Of Ghadir. So basically these, these, this is, these are some of the most famous books on Ghadir. There are many books on Imam Ali Salam himself. But right. th these books are on, on Ghadir, the event. There are many shorter books. There are many, many books. Right. Hujjat uh, al-Maram. Ghayat al-Maram wa Hujjat al-Khisam. Ghayat al-Maram is basically... By Baharani, seven volumes on also Allah on Vilayat yeah. and Imamat. Thank you very much for taking your time out and joining us for this program to uh, remember Imam Amir Mu'minin's life, his legacy, and some of the works as we have discussed that tackle with this issue. We like to thank the Mu'minin and Mu'minat for joining us in this program of Eid al Ghadir, and once again, congratulations uh, on this great symbolic day of Eid al Ghadir. And we hope you enjoyed our program. Thank you so much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Amin.